my name is Stella and I'm a violin teacher and on today's lesson I will teach you how to play on the violin the song Let Us Chase the Squirrel. So get your violin, tune your violin, put some rosin on the bow and let's get started. First of all, I would like to explain the time signature and the key signature of the piece. It is played in 2-4. That means that we have two beats in each measure and the key signature is C major. So there is no accidental, they are all natural notes in this scale, in the C major scale. The rhythm patterns that we have in this song are T, 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 which we can see on the first measure. The second measure is Ta, Ta. And the third measure is T T T K T. So that's a new rhythm pattern here, the T K T. And it repeats also on the fourth measure and also on the seventh measure. Okay, so those are the rhythm patterns that we have on the piece. And at the end, we have a single quarter note and a quarter rest. That means one bit of silence. So now that we got our violin we can start playing the song. So the first measure is T T T T and we start with the C on the A string which is with the second finger. So starting with A then B then C. So that's our starting note. So that's how you find where you're supposed to start. Okay, so you have to make sure that you have the right C. So after C we're playing D, which is right after C, but it's a whole step, not half, but a whole step. So we're playing the C first. Again. So it's C, C, D, D, then we have the fourth finger E on the A string or you can play it with open string E, whichever is easier. I'm going to play it with the fourth finger. So we have ta, ta. So we have two quarter notes and we have to play those quarter notes in one bow as you see there is a slur on the second measure and we have to keep two notes in one bow, two quarter notes. So we have to make a um, very like clear judgment on the bow. So how much we have to use for the E and how much for the G. We have to use half of the bow for the E and half for the G. At the half part of the bow we switch on the E string and we play the G. So again so you have to practice this part until you get it right or you can play with open E And then after you practice with stopping, then you have to practice without stopping. So basically you have to look at the bow and see when the bow arrives at the middle, you have to play the G. So you have to look at the bow while you're playing. Okay? So one more time. This is easier for beginners, but for advanced students, you can play with the fourth finger. And this is legato, so you have to play with no stopping. But in the beginning, when you practice, you can play with stopping until you get the notes right. Then you can move on to like playing it without stopping. So I'm going to recap again, first measure and second measure. So we start with the C 
and we are starting at the bottom then E I'm stopping at the tip of the bow so there I have to play two quarter notes on the, set, the third measure starts with C, C again I'm using only the tip of the bow quarter part of the bow for the titties so it's one is up, one is down so T, T and here I have the 16th note Tika. See how much bow I'm using? And then I'm going to the fourth measure with the E. I'm playing the E at the middle of the bow. Then I'm going to play the D, D, D again, the 16th note with the 8th note. So this part measure three and four they're very important regarding the how you have to separate the bow when you're playing this part and then on the fourth measure the E's are at the middle of the bow the titis and the tikas and the T brings us back at the tip of the bow okay so again measure three and four together okay now moving on to measure five we have C, C, D, D, the same as the beginning measure first and second they're the same as measure five and six difference here is the movement of the bow where in the beginning we had down bow for the titis but here we have upper bow so we're playing those titis at the upper bow and then measure seven and eight so measure eight was only the C followed by a rest. The song goes like this. Let us chase the squirrel up the hickory, down the hickory. Let us chase the squirrel up the hickory tree. And for this game, you have to make a circle and choose two people. One to be inside the circle, which is going to be the hunter. And one child has to be outside the circle, walking while the song is sung around the circle and the hunter is standing inside the circle at the end of the song the hunter breaks out of the circle and tries to tag and catch the squirrel you can also sing the song and play the drum at the same time so this is a tambourine actually that I have so you can play it like with your hand or you can play with a stick which I prefer playing it with a stick so let's sing it again. Let us chase the squirrel up the hickory, down the hickory. Let us chase the squirrel up the hickory tree. Let us chase the squirrel up the hickory, down the hickory. Let us chase the squirrel up the hickory tree. And if you want, you can speed it up gradually to make it more fun so you can also play the rhythm on the drum and you can use the song playing the rhythm 
which goes like this. Let us chase the So there is two ways to play it using your rhythm pattern t t t t or using the words or you can also use the beat ta 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 which is one two one two let us chase the squirrel up the hickory down the hickory let us chase the squirrel up the hickory tree rest let us chase the squirrel up the hickory, down the hickory. Let us chase the squirrel up the hickory tree. Rest. Okay, so have fun if you have a drum. If you don't, make your own drum. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Here we are at the end of another lesson. I hope this was helpful and you enjoyed it. Thank you for sharing, liking and subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it.